How many of us can say that we are blessed? Amen. You know, the Bible says that we are blessed beyond measure. Amen? Amen? That's why our God is an amazing God. Can you tell your neighbor, my God is an amazing God? Amen? Amen. Because He's amazing, we cannot help but to tell the good news. Amen? Amen. And today is Palm Sunday, and we remember Jesus coming at the gates of Jerusalem. And we remember, you know, the people of Israel said, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And we know the meaning of Hosanna. What's the meaning of Hosanna? Calling the Savior, Lord, save us. Amen. So let it be the cry of our heart today, even as we remember, you know, this week is, is uh, Holy Week. We will remember the crucifixion of Jesus this coming Friday, and this Sunday we will remember his resurrection. Amen. So today, I'm, I'm going to share from the book of Daniel, but we will come back to this Hosanna, Lord save us. Because the fact of the matter is, it's very hard to share the gospel if we do not know people need Jesus. Amen. And first of all, I think all of us must reflect this week, why do I need a Savior? Why do I need Jesus? What did Jesus save me for and from? Because you see, if we do not define this, you know, our worship will always be dull. Our expression of songs, our expression of devotion will always, will always be minimal. Because we don't define what did Jesus save me for? Why? Why did Jesus come? Why did Jesus die for me? Why bother knowing? So church, I want us to be reminded today that our God saves. And it's very much um, inclined with what I'm going to share today in, from the book of Daniel chapter 3, that our God is the God who delivers. Amen? And the topic that I want to share today is standing in the last days. My brother and sister, you may or may not know we are in the last days. We are in the last stretch of what is to come. We are at the last stretch of the things that God will manifest His presence like never before, the revival that we will see like never before, and the evils that we have not seen. As we look at today's society, you know, church, many of us are being programmed by the world. And let me tell you the truth. All of us living in this world have different belief system. Whether we live like Christ or live for Christ or as a... As we mature in age, either we adopt a spiritual view or a secular view. There's, there's no in-between view. Why am I sharing this? Because from the book of Daniel, we see the life of Daniel. He's li living in Babylon. His friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, is living in Babylon. They're living in a place that is not godly, who does not believe in the same God they believe in, who believes in different gods, who believes in their king, who believes in their empire. So they are living in this place, and we will learn a lot more from, from reading in, in the book of Daniel. And I, want us, I wanted to share today that, you see, no matter whether you like it or not, you will worship something. Can I hear an amen? amen. Whether you choose God or if you choose not choosing, it's still a choice. Amen. Because sometimes we, you know, there's a call that we know. There's a call that is stirring us, right? There is something that is pulling us. Sometimes we spend so much time at work, it's okay. Spend so much time with our kids. I'm spending a lot of time with my, my second child, you know. Um, sleep three hours, not enough sleep at night, you know. Always cry very loud. And, and uh, I'm spending a lot of time with her. And I remember preparing for today's sermon. I was telling the Lord, you know, I have work, I have this, and I have uh, uh, things to do, and I have things at home. And I sat down and I told the Lord, I cry out to God, Lord, how to prepare a sermon. And you know what? I, I sat down and the Lord said, sit down, I'm going to give you the word. Sometimes we prepare for, for 10 hours. It, it takes God one minute for revelation to come. At the end of the day, church, you will worship something. Either you worship God or you worship yourself. Or you worship even the government, or even you worship what you do, or you worship your expertise, or you worship your, your, your profession. Even you can worship your spouse, also can. Whatever you do, let me ask my wife first. 
Let me ask my husband first. You can't do anything. You must ask the, the, the partner, which is good. I do the same thing. But when it comes to the things of God, I do not need to ask my wife. You know why? Because God takes the preeminence. Jesus died for me, not, not Crystal. You know? So I want us to understand this. You see, the presence of God is so close when our devotion and the words that comes out from our mouth and our action comes together. Because sometimes a lot of us struggle. Why am I struggling in worship? Maybe my devotion is not really to God, but towards myself. And a lot of us are being programmed today in Singapore, in the United States, in big cities, that I have lived, I need to live for myself. I can be whatever I want to be. I can be whoever I want to become because I'm living for me. My truth. In the past, it's more of the truth of the Bible, right? The truth of the religion, right? And then there's a truth from the government. You know, they say what their truth, this is the, the laws that you must follow. But now we are being encouraged to have the, your own truth. And it doesn't matter what the real truth say, my truth will remain true to me. And, I want, and, and that is very dangerous. Because you see, when the truth be, becomes personal truth, you know what? That's idolatry. Because you believe in yourself, you worship yourself. It doesn't matter what the church say. It doesn't matter what the Bible says. What matters is what I feel. The fact of the matter is, if we cannot stand today, that day will come, we won't be able to stand. What is my devotion? I've talked about this the previous Sunday I shared. And my, is, is, is my worship towards God or is my worship to my own doing? Because you see, how do you know who you worship? By the fruits you bear. Amen. What are the fruits you're bearing? Do you bear love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, kindness, even forgiveness? Do you have those fruits in you? Because if it's not reflecting from within us, means whatever we're doing in church is useless. Amen. Because it has to manifest. Amen. Patience must manifest. Love must manifest. Forgiveness must manifest. Long-suffering must manifest. Amen. Because you see, if, if it's not manifesting, means the God that I'm worshipping is not having a relationship with me. Because you see, God cannot stand sin. When we're going through things in life and, the, and we know the right decision to make and when we consult God, this is the right path to take. We will still, still tell the Lord otherwise. Because Lord, I think this is a better way. I think Jesus, this is a better way. I've learned my lesson when my second born child, she's premature, right? I, I shared the other Sunday. The Lord spoke to me in May, have a baby, but we delayed to have the baby in June. Baby supposed to be born in February, but because we delayed, you know what? Premature baby. I learned my lesson. If God says, do it now, do it now. Otherwise, I'll suffer. My pocket will suffer. <laughs> I see you for nights, okay? But you know what? I thank God for just a short testimony. When we heard that Edith was going to, um, to ICU, um, of course, our heart were, were Crystal and I, we, we were very broken, you know? My, our daughter, she's just born, then she'll be separated from us. And uh, I pray, I cry, la. I cried in secret, la. you know? And, um, but the thing was, my heart was at peace. Crystal's heart was at peace. Somehow we knew this will happen, somehow, you know? There's, there's this inclination from within us. So that's why, church, do not deny the counsel of the Holy Spirit. Even the, the premature birth, I told Crystal, you know, in January, when I was praying, the Lord spoke to me, get ready for childbirth at the end of, the, of February, the last week of February. And I told the Lord, last week of February, isn't it premature? <laughs> I asked God, you know. But the Lord said, get ready this week, she will come out. And I told Crystal, get ready, she will come out. So we, we, you know, we are kind of prepared that the baby is coming. And we asked the whole church to pray. And, and um, Edith Ruth was a breech baby, the head was on top. I, I knew she will be, Crystal will be on C-section. I knew it all my heart. But we still pray, you know. We still um, pray what we desire. The Lord did not say, don't pray, ma. <laughs> so we just pray. But we knew from our heart. And when I checked with Crystal, when the C-section is about to come, actually, I feel that I will be C-section. So you, you, you see, this is the counsel of the Holy Spirit, right? We, we are not denying it. 
but by faith, we hope, Lord, maybe you can change. But still, we follow the ways of God. We don't know why. Actually, I know why. <laughs> you know, because um, I don't want to be scientific. Like, later, I say wrong things. Uh, Dr. Lai is dead. <laughs> no, because uh, the, 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 the waypoint that the baby will come out has uh, bacteria. You know, they check, the doctor check. So if, if baby Edith, who is premature and high in uh, white blood cell, if she comes out normally, she will have more complication. You get what I mean? Uh, those mothers, you will know lah, huh, that you cannot have bacteria at the, at the exit point, for a better way of saying, eh? for exit point, because some, pe some babies, I've, I've heard, you know, some, some even died because of too much infection. So that, you know, God has a purpose. Amen. Hey, come on, I praise the Lord. Nah. <laughs> you know, God has a purpose. So when C-section happened and the baby, white blood cells, she went to ICU and uh, my heart was broken and we visited the child and only one parent can go in with a lot of babies in the ICU, you know. And I, I saw many babies inside, some of them very small, some of them with a lot of tubes and I, I, I see my baby so big, so fat. <laughs> what are you doing here actually? <laughs> Because our gynae said she's normal, except for the white blood cell. Everything is normal, kidney, lungs, everything is good. But I, I told Crystal, you know, I believe that our baby is there so that we can intercede for other babies. So that Edith can bring the presence of God. I really believe with all my heart. Because when I saw the babies, I cried for them more than my own, you know. My own look okay. <laughs> she looks fat. I come back, huh? <laughs> I come back, huh? I saw her cheeks become bigger, you know. Then I asked the nurse, how come her cheeks bigger? Well, she drink very well, oh, praise God. Because <laughs> really, literally from the, the, the day we sent her to ICU, we come back home, and then the next day I went, I saw her cheeks very big. So God's, God's goodness upon her, you know. So I thank God for that. As the Bible says, uh, give thanks at all seasons of your life, for this is the will of God, isn't it? So we thank the Lord, though she was there for four nights, but she came back to us healthy, strong, um, and we are excited to bring her. Not yet, because Crystal is still recovering. The baby is still uh, strengthening her body, very strong. And the day comes, then you all say hello. Lah. <laughs> Coming back, walking through this earth, we realize that life is all about choices. As I've said earlier, if we don't choose, we are making a choice not to choose. So what are the choices we're making today? Because it's very important, your choices determine your devotion. Amen. Today I can choose to spend time with God. Today I can choose to think about God. Today I can choose to have the fruit of the Holy Spirit intentionally. By what? Being patient. We are fashioned somehow that we need to be predictable. Can you tell your neighbor, predictable? We like predictability. We, we, like to, we like forecasts. If what consumes our mind daily, you, if, if it's not God, then it's the world. means our worship is divided. It's not, it's not just the worship of God who is holy, who is righteous, who is just, who is coming back again. Now I'm focusing more on the things of the world. So my worship is no longer towards God. And what happens? What is this programming going on? We like to see results. And then only we will be satisfied. Amen. A lot of us are like this, church. Can you tell your neighbor, ouch? <laughs> you know, we like predictability. We like, we like results. If there's no results, I don't want to do anymore. But we forget, you see, when you do things for Jesus, when God calls you to a specific thing, you don't see results tomorrow, you know. We don't see results even in 10 years' time. You know why? Because the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, it says there that, what did the Bible says? Do not store up treasures on earth, but store up treasures in heaven. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Amen. So if your treasure is not Jesus, if your treasure is not the one who is holy, you know what? Your heart is in the world. That's why we struggle every day. A lot of times we wonder, why am I struggling in the world? Why am I struggling in sin? Because our investment is not in Jesus. Amen. My mother used to tell me when I was very young, son, 
we are not very rich, but the Bible says, store up treasures in heaven. <laughs> I believe they are very rich in heaven because they've given their life for the Lord. And I'm learning still how to store up treasures in heaven. And I want to come back to this, you see, that everything we choose is the reflection of our thought process. May it be godly or worldly as it comes. So church, again, I want us to have a reflection today as you're listening to this word, as you're listening to the sermon today. Where is my treasure? Where is my, who, what am I choosing every day? You see, using your phone is a choice. Watching movies is a choice. Watching YouTube, Instagram is a choice. Having your patience, or rather, having temper is also a choice. Can you tell your neighbor? Having temper is also a choice. <laughs> I'm being angry, yeah, suddenly, like that. You just lash your tongue, and all that is a choice, you know. You cannot say, oh, I don't mean it a lot more. <laughs> if you have a gun, uh, <laughs> you just shoot. Because <laughs> the Bible says, when you're angry, what do you commit? Murder. So, which means you just shoot people, like, bang, like cowboy, you know. <laughs> so church, I want us to reflect today. Where is your devotion and what are you choosing every day? Because it's a choice. Worship is a choice. Not committing sin is a choice. Abiding by the word of God is a choice. Even in businesses, sometimes people, may, may, pe people have told me before, Pastor, I don't have a choice. I need to do this in order to have money. I need to cut uh, uh, um, some corners. Cut corners means you're cheating, eh? I need to cut corners to make money. How? I, I told the brother, lah, you know, do what is right. I cannot advise you. I'm not a businessman, but I can advise you from the word. Do, do what is right. Because what we do will be judged at the end of times. So church, today, your choice will determine how you will stand at the end times. Because today, it's easy to say, Brian Bailey, one of the men of God, who passed away quite some time ago, he said in the last days, he saw a vision that when the mark of the beast comes, even Christians will say, it's okay, Jesus will understand. And I, I've heard this prophecy a few times. And I, I, I heard a big church, just for your information, I don't know which country, I don't ask me. Eh? I heard a church, the leaders, the pastors say, when the mark of the beast comes, it's okay to take... Because God will understand. Can you believe? Don't ask me where, which country, who's the pastor, but they have 30,000, 40,000 members. I'll cut this, I'll edit. But it's just for your information. Because it's, it's now easy to say, you know, I don't want to take the mark of the beast, but on that day you're hungry, your child is hungry, your spouse is hungry, you're not well. The Bible says you cannot trade, nor you can sell or buy. When the mark of the beast comes, you need the seal. If you don't have a seal, what to do? So whatever we have today in our pockets, you know what? That day you'll throw it away because you cannot do trade anymore. You cannot buy, you cannot sell. So that's why church, we are warning, you know, as much as we can, that when the last days come, trust in the Lord. Amen. Thank you for the one amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let me read from the book of Daniel. This is, uh, this is just my introduction. Daniel chapter 3, very quickly. King Nebuchadnezzar, verse 1, made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and its breadth 6 cubits. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then King Nebuchadnezzar sent to gather the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, and the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, and the magistrates and all the officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Okay, I'll, I'm going to skip to verse 4. So the, basically the story is about suddenly King, King Nebuchadnezzar wake up in the morning. You know, he's a king, he can do whatever he want, right? Wake up in the morning, he was inspired to make a statue of himself. <laughs> Sugar. <laughs> what does it... Okay, later I'll, I'll, I'll give you the, the, the prophetic meaning. And then in verse 4, And the herald proclaimed aloud, You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and language, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, 
trigon, harp, bug pi bagpipe, and every kind of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. I want you all to underline this word, commanded. It seems that in today's society, we are commanded, underlined, maybe pressured, on how to live our lives, work, raising kids, and so on. What do I mean by that? In this current generation, now that Singapore is, is, is more affluent and, and bigger cities are more affluent, there seems to be a trend of how do we grow up, how do we study, which is good, how do we find work, how do we, when do we have spouses? How do, when do we have kids? Where do we send our kids to? Which school? And so on. You know, there's this trend that all of us must follow. It's, it's not a command, but it seems that it is. We have no choice. Because in, in bigger cities, you will hear this word, no choice. Isn't it? We hear this often, you know, I have no choice. I have to work. Which is true, which is true. But if the society tells us or rather commands you not to come to church, lessen your devotion time, don't spend, with, uh, with, don't spend time with God, then something is wrong. Because it's easy to say, I am the church. I, I, my house is a church, easy to say. But do we really do church at home? That's the question, right? So again, coming back to this, it seems that in, this, in today's society, we are reprimanded how to live our lives. There is a trend that when we read this, it says here, O people, O nations, in language, in verse 5, that when you hear the sound of horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image. When, when, we, when we look into today's society, everything has music. Commercial, um, if you are sad, there's a song for that. If you're depressed, there's songs for depression. And those, and those depressed people, I don't know why they keep listening to depressing songs. Why? You tell me, I don't know, I don't understand. No, I understand, I've been there. <laughs> when I was a teenager, I was so depressed, I listened to punk rock. That was my time, you know, that's a bit depressing, fast but depressing lyrics. We've been through these seasons of our lives, right? But let me ask you, what kind of music do you listen to? Of course, adults, we, you know, we listen to, I trust we all listen to worship songs, huh? <laughs> But for the young people, what kind of songs do you listen to? Because the songs that you listen to programs you. Even TikTok, you know, TikTok is more music. Lah. You see the dance, they dance, but you don't know the song they're singing. Amen. And many, there's many music that when you play the song backward, you know what? That music, piece of music is worshipping Satan. So you got, you got to be very, very mindful of the music you listen to. Because music, even movies, you know, spirits can manifest and sit with you. I've seen that. I've watched uh, an anime before when I was a teenager. It's called Death Note, okay? I remember watching it. Uh, beautiful anime, you know, I love it. I love the story. It's good. But you know what I saw when I was watching it? I saw demons coming out from my screen. But you know what? I'm so naughty. I was 17 years old. I still watch. Even though I'm saying, I pray, man, after that, cast out demons, then watch again the next day. Crazy, you know, I won't do that again, <laughs> especially with babies, you know. There's shows I want to watch, but I cannot watch because I got babies at home. Are you, are you listening? Are you listening? Because, you see, it's very important, of course, when we're young, we're foolish, right? But as we mature, all this will affect us, you know, our behavior pattern, our choices, how we think, how we act. So sometimes we, we feel I'm pulled down. How, why cannot... Why can't I worship? Why can't I give God my best? Maybe because of all these things we see and we hear. Amen. And when we read at, at uh, Daniel chapter 3, somehow this king want his image to be up there. What does it speak today? Self-image. Today you'll see people all over internet posting themselves. Some of them are a little bit more revealing. Some of them even uh, promoting themselves out there as prostitutes, you know. You may or may not know, but some young people, girls today, especially in the West, they have an account for porn. You know what? They even advertise in their own account, and then you go to their account, and then when you go to that particular website, you know what? The subscription for prostitution. It's crazy world we are living in, you know. 
That's why church, adults, parents, be informed. Don't just tell your kids don't do that. Know what they're reading. Know what they're looking at. So that we can have a discussion. You know, conversation. You cannot be just don't do. No, no, have a conversation. So that our children will understand why no, why yes. Amen. Amen. Because we're living in these times, you know, in, in Daniel chapter 3. Make my own image and you know what? Worship me. I'm worshiping myself. That is what the world is doing today. And if we're not aware of what's going on, because what the world is programming us to, just take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Self-care, self-help, self-beautifying. <laughs> you know? And all these uh, things to beautify yourselves are getting cheaper and cheaper because people want you to go there and beautify yourself. Nothing wrong, but if you're worshiping yourself every day, you think about your makeup this morning. What makeup should I wear? What kind of hairstyle should I do? <laughs> what clothes should I wear today? Uh, you know, I like to dress up, but that's not my idol, yeah? Again, I want to implore to all of us, is God your commander or is the world your commander? There's only two. Not choosing means you're choosing the world. So today, church, and, and, and again, before I move on to, to my next point is, you see, our, the, the, the globe, planet Earth is revolving, whether you choose it or you don't choose, the world will spin. Whether you like it or not, the time will pass. Days after days, week after week, month after month, year after year. If, you're not, if you do not want to be close to God, tomorrow you will not be close to God. If you do not survive what the enemy is doing today, if you do not know how to navigate yourself spiritually, physically, you know what? In the last days, never. Impossible. Because your breakthrough must be today. You see, before this story, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, including Daniel, they already told the chief eunuch, we will not partake of this food. We will just eat vegetables. Right? Because they do not want to partake of the things of the world. So even Nebuchadnezzar knows these three boys. Right? Even before making his suddenly, you know, imagination, his image, even before making this idol, he knows these three boys, maybe he forgot lah. You know, these three boys will not choose to bow down, right? But he still chooses to do it. Verse 8, it says here, Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and maliciously accused the Jews. They declared, King Nebuchadnezzar, O, o king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, dragon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the burning fairy furnace. You know what this speaks? <clears throat> you, when we follow Jesus, you know, you will be accused. You will be trampled upon. People will talk about you. It's good, you know, because you're getting popular. <laughs> People talk about you, you're popular, ma, right? So if people talk about you, always remember this phrase, so what? Can you tell your neighbor, so what? You know, why am I saying this, you see? Jesus did not care for his own face going to the cross. Jesus did not care for his own body being beat down, being wept just because of you and I to be saved. Jesus, uh, if we can put it very, very simply, uh, going to the cross, so what? <laughs> At the end of this stage, in the end of this, this journey, I will save my people. So church, if people talk about you because of your belief, because of Jesus, you know what? Remember this, so what? If Jesus approves of me, that's enough. You know, church, we need to grow up in this level of faith that we can tell ourselves and tell the world if everybody Say no to me as long as I have Jesus. That's enough. Because that's the criteria to standing in the last days, you know. You may believe it or not, but it's coming. It's already here. The Antichrist is already here. A lot of things are going on. A lot of crazy things will happen in the future. That's why, church, all the more we need to have faith to believe. Amen. So people will accuse us. And then when we read this, every man, and you see, just because they, did, they don't want to bow to that image, you know what? They are penalized. To what? Throw to the fiery furnace. 
So church, you see, we are pressured in this world today to do what they're doing, to say what they're saying. And if you don't do it, you know what? You won't be successful in life. Says who? Yes? Correct, huh? We pressure our children to study so hard. Studying is okay. Studying is good. Pass, have a good GPA, go to the best school, study, have influence. If God promotes you, good. But if it's affecting your relationship, if it's affecting your life and all that, oh, must do, must do, must do, then that's not healthy. Yeah? Because at the end of the day, don't fight for unnecessary things. Fight for their soul so that they may know Jesus. Amen. Amen. Because you see, the, the world will penalize us. If you don't do this, if you don't do this, you won't be successful. Many people told me that, but I have two kids. I have a home. Many people told me, Yo, the route that you're doing, I cannot make it one. I correct us, CVG. Oh, people, why are you full-time for what? Why are you serving God for what? You're so young, you can do so many things. Just serve on the weekend, can already. I knew in my heart, I'm serving God. I knew in my heart, I'm called by God. I don't care what they say, so what? I mean, I didn't tell them. <laughs> I'm so young, man. later they scold me. Just at the back of my head, I say, so what? Even my parents told me the same thing. But at the end of the day, I know my call. I know this is what God wants me to do. Then do it with all my heart. If you know your calling and your election, go for it. Don't let your, your inner demons uh, take over. Don't let the influence of the world take over. And don't let even uh, your hurts take over. Just before I, I, I move forward, I've, I've said this a few times before, but I want to reiterate very quickly. You see, a lot of us give up ministry, give up church, give up God just because of hurt. Let me ask you this question. Is hurt worthy? Yes. <laughs> no. La. Is the word hurt Feelings, is it worthy of your devotion? But how come some people are so devoted to their hurt? I'm so hurt. I'm so hurt. How many times? How long? Jesus coming already, you know. <laughs> you know, you cannot tell Jesus when he comes, you know, face to face. You cannot tell Jesus, Jesus, I didn't do what you asked me to do because I'm hurt. No. Jesus will tell you in the face, I died for you. I died for you. I gave my life for you so that you can overcome your hurt. Because you, you, you see, church, a lot of times you're fighting the wrong battles. You're fighting the wrong demons. We are fighting inner demons instead of fighting for our brothers to be saved. Instead of fighting for this generation, Lord, I will not stop praying. I will not stop worshiping. I will not stop sharing until I see a generation coming before you. Some of us here, you know, some of us here are... Uh, Foreign workers, you know, our, our sisters here, some of you are foreign workers. You know what? You, you just absorb what you receive and you'll be an evangelist going back home. Amen. Plant church when you go back home. Amen. Because this is, this is our desire, you know. We're not just coming to church to, to, to warm the seats, you know. Where you are, you can start a church. <laughs> you know, you can share the gospel. Amen. So church, let not our emotions stop us from serving God in fulfilling his destiny over our lives. Amen. So I'll come back to the scripture. Verse 12. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, pay no attention to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. See, these people are uh, uh, setting them up. Huh? So when we read this, it's, it's very typical some of us in the some of you in the corporate world, you might you must have experienced this before. You know, people talking behind your back, ah oh, yeah, this guy is so and so not good, you know. He doesn't do overtime on Sunday, he doesn't want to work on a weekend. Why promote him for what? Ah. We hear this a lot of times. You know, but but what I would encourage us is as Christians, be the best in your station. Be the best. Be the best, absolute best. You know, because if you're absolute best, uh, your, your boss will think twice before laying you off, you know. He called these three boys, and in verse 15 it says here, Now if you are ready, King Nebuchadnezzar is telling, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, all these things, but if you do not worship, you shall immediately 
be cast into the burning fiery furnace and who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? Very, very powerful um, question, you know. You shall immediately be cast into a burning fire furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you? And many times, you know, at, at our workplaces, maybe at schools as well, we are pressured to do things we don't want to do. We are pressured to go to days that we cannot go. Sunday, example, right? Oh, I have this and that. My, my, last time in army and even my music teaching before, if there's Sunday, I'll say no. You pay me 500, 1K, 2K, 3K, I don't care. I'm not going. You know why? My devotion is with Jesus, not with my money, not with my work. If you have to go, you have to go. Lah. I mean, if, 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 you know, again, be wise. Yeah, be wise. If Dr. Lai need to do operation, of course, you have to go. Lah. You know, no choice. You have to go. But if you have a choice to come and serve God, serve God with all your heart. Amen. And this is a powerful, uh, come back to that scripture, Felicia. <clears throat> This is a powerful statement because you see, the world will always challenge you and I. Who is your savior? If, if I lay you off today, you can survive or not? Ah. A lot, this, this question always bombard us, you know. If you choose this, how about your family? Who will save you? Who will pay for the bills? Amen. It's, it's, it's a challenging question, you know. But what did the three boys say? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. Imagine answering the king, you know, prime minister level, president level, telling, uh, I don't need to answer you. <laughs> you know what we will say. Remember the story, right? They did not eat vegetable. Because what? They're rebels. <laughs> rebels not to God. Rebels against the world. You know, young people, a lot of us were young also. Eh? We, we've been to this stage, you know, you feel a bit more rebel. You feel cool. Wow, cool rebel. Eh? Why not we, we change that instead of rebelling against parents, against government, rebel against the things of the world and follow Jesus and have this statement. Eh? So what? You know, parents, sometimes you ask your kids, uh, then you, they just tell you, Whatever. <laughs> so what? When they told the king, who is the highest of the high position, we have no need to answer you in this matter. Next one. 17. If this be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. Wow. This is what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say. My God will deliver me. Our God is able to deliver. Did they experience God before this? We don't know. There's no records, right? We don't know whether they saw Jesus, they saw God, or they see signs and wonders and miracles. But you know where they refer to? They refer to the God of Moses. The same God who delivered them out from Egypt. The same God who split the Red Sea is the same God who will save them. The same God who raised King David as their king is the same God who will deliver them. Amen. So you see, in the last days, especially today, church, train yourself to stand firm. Train yourself to stand firm. That we can tell our boss, huh? you may not pay me this Sunday, I don't go, but you know what? My God is my provider. I remember going to the US, huh? you know, Sister VG, we're all together, and I don't have a lot of funds. And Pasa asked me, how, how much is your fund? I say, this much. Pasa will always ask me this, Pastor Stephen. He say, then how? God shall supply my needs. Then correct answer. <laughs> Pastor Stephen say, that's correct answer. And you know what? God supply my needs. We are applying for a house. Pasa asked me, how much your funds? This is my funds. I mean, he told me to buy my. Then how? <laughs> he, asked, he asked me, then how? Then I said, God shall supply my needs. Before marriage... I don't have a lot of money. Sister Vijay will know me very close. I'll tell her everything in the office last time. She's my second mother. <laughs> you know, before marriage, I only have very little in my bank account. You know what I told Crystal? What I told her parents? How? My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and his glory. You know, I'm, I'm very confident in this because I've seen too many times my God provides. 
He will deliver us out from your hand. Oh, King, what confidence. Today, church, how many of us can say this? How many of us can declare, my God will deliver me? Because a lot of times, uh, our faith is based on circumstance. Emergency-based faith. Not a daily based faith. Walk with God daily. And you know what? When, when circumstances happen, you are very confident. God shall supply my need. Amen. Please, uh, parents, later all the young people come to you. God shall supply my need. <laughs> That's good. Start from there. Next verse. Verse 18. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Amen. They made a stand. Because the question for us, huh, living in, in, in big cities, those who are watching online as well, you see, if, if the cities will change, you cannot carry your Bible anymore, you cannot preach the gospel anymore, you cannot worship God anymore, then how? Will we be afraid to be thrown to prison? Are we going to stop worshipping? Are we going to stop gathering? Because today is a good time to, 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 to build our foundation of faith. I don't know, I can't say for myself yet. But hopefully that day we can stand. When times change, when Antichrist takes over, let's hope for the best that God will stand with us. Amen. Next verse. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury. Because they don't want to worship his beautiful image. Huh? <laughs> then the expression of his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace heated seven times more than it was usually heated. Oh my goodness. Seven times, okay. Means when throw you there, you'll melt 100%. Maybe they use this to, um, to refine gold, silver, or sword, uh, blacksmith. I don't know. Next verse. And he ordered some of the mighty men, mighty men, when you refer in, 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 in the Old Testament, mighty men means they're one of the strongest of the military members. Very strong. Of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Next verse. Then these men who bound in their cloaks, their tunics, their hats, and their garments, and they were thrown into the burning fiery furnace. 22, because the king ordered was urgent and the furnace overheated more than seven times. Amen. That's why church always remember, you will be tested. And I'll talk about this a little bit later on. <clears throat> the flame of the fire killed those men who took up the three boys. Imagine now you're just following the king and you also cannot fire. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's how powerful the fire was. Next verse, 24. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up in haste. He declared to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Next verse. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the door of the burning fiery furnace. He declared Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire. So let's go back to verse 25. <clears throat> verse 25, it says here, He answered and he said, But I see four men unbound walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. Did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego know that this person will appear and protect them? They don't know. They, they, am, I, am I wrong? They know or they don't know? They don't know. But they believe my God will deliver. And you know what? He came. He stood in the fire. Even though they're in the fire, the three boys were in the fire, they knew they're going to burn. They knew they're going to die. They knew they'll, res they'll, they'll have excruciating pain before they die. They knew it with all their heart, you know. They knew that they will suffer before they die in the fire. You won't just die immediately, you know, when you're thrown in the fire. You will feel the heat first. It will burn you from outside in. Yet, they chose God. But because they chose God, you know what? God appeared before them. 
He stood in the fire. Amen. Church, I want us to be encouraged today. When you choose Jesus, He will stand in the fire with you. That's why the Bible says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for my God is with me. Amen. Amen. We are not afraid in the night, even though the, the, the darkness is there, even though the fire is there. You know what? When you believe in Jesus with all your heart, if you have a relationship with Him, you know what? He will stand with you in the fire. Amen. So church, I want us to... Uh, Today, you know, to be very convinced and convicted that my God will deliver. And then later I'll talk about the three tests. What are the tests that will come and test us today? And in verse, let me continue. In verse 26, then Nebuchadnezzar came out near the door in the burning fairy furnace and declared that the three boys, servants of the Most High God, came out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire. And the straps, prefects, the governors, and the king's counselor gathered together and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those men. Their hair and of their, the hair of their heads was not singed. Their cloaks were not harmed, and no smell of fire had come upon them. Amen. You know, this is a picture of the last days. That even though the enemy comes, the Antichrist comes, maybe will be against you. You know what? Nothing will touch you if God so will. Amen. Nothing. There's too, many, there's too many stories. When you read missionary stories, when you read the early church stories, too many stories of God delivering them out from prison, out from the enemies, surviving even the the, the torture, surviving even the... But of course, there are martyrs. If God so permits us to be martyred, then glory be to God. Great is your reward. Amen. If God make me a martyr, then let it be so. I'll die for Jesus. Amen. So let it be our heart today. Let us choose today that Jesus will deliver us. Some of us may go through tra challenges in life. Some of us may go through impossible things in life, struggling with spouses, struggling with money, struggling with children. Some of us may go through all these things. But let me tell you the truth. The fire will not touch you. Amen. That's who our God is. That's why we, you know, when we worship, when we use songs such, Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, Light in the Darkness, my God, that is who you are. When you sing this, you mean it. Because you know. You know. Amen. Can you tell your neighbor, you know, that your God is good. Amen. Because church, if we do not know God, it's impossible to say God will deliver me. You must know God. We must know God. We must know the character of God. We must know His attributes. We must know the person of God. And you know what? When all these things happen, we can stand. Hallelujah. Let me skip to verse 29. Therefore, I make a degree, decree. Any people, nation, and languages that speaks anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn, limbed from limb and their house laid in ruins, for there is no other gods who is able to rescue in his way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Amen? As you see, church, when we walk by faith, even the world will see God in us. Amen? When the Lord said, tells us specific things at work, or your profession, your business, even your family. Your family may think, wow, dad, you siaw, are you crazy? Why you choose this? Even your, your kid may say, mom, why you choose this? Why you do this? And then you know what? In your heart, in your heart will be this. You will see one day. God will move. Amen. Sometimes schools, we want to send our, our kids to the best school. But God says, no, I don't want this school. I want this school. Then how? Parents? I will be challenged as well. Huh? I'm not just talking about you, huh? about me. <laughs> How? If God chooses the best, that must be the ultimate best. Amen. Even workplaces. Wow, but this work, huh? pay me 1K less, you know, or 2K less. Alama. How? But God wants you to be in this company. Maybe you don't know. Along the way, God will prosper the company. God will promote you and you will be the top Amen. of that company. You don't know. 
Just obey. Amen. Some of us, maybe God is, is pushing us to start our own business. I don't know. Do it with all your heart. Maybe some of us are, you know, God is, is, is telling us to transfer company. We don't know. But trust in the Lord. Trust in that process that you and your family will see God in the fire. I've seen it so many times, even in my young age. That's why I'm very convinced, I'm very convicted. When God says it will come, it will come to pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me talk about what are the tests very quickly. There are three tests that, that we will go through. And, and when I'm reading this, this scripture just came to me in Matthew 4, 1 to 11. Because you see, the three boys were tested with food. They were tested to test God. And they are tested whether to bow to the image. So let's turn our Bible, Matthew 4, very quickly, chapter, verse 1. Verse 1, then Jesus led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Who led Jesus in the wilderness? Devil? No, not the devil. Ah. <laughs> read, read. Then Jesus was led up by who? By the Holy Spirit. By the Spirit of God. It's capital S, the Spirit of God, okay? <laughs> not the devil. <laughs> Cancel. You see, Jesus was led in the wilderness by the Spirit to be Tempted. Amen. That's why, church, don't be afraid when temptations come, when challenges come. You know what? God led you there. <laughs> How about that? God led you there. You know why? So that you may know God is an overcomer. So that we may know that God will deliver. The first test. What was the first test? The test was, number one, the food we consume. What is the food we consume? Not just food, what we consume to our system. Verse 2, Then after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And then the tempter, Satan, came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. You know what? We'll be tested with what? Wealth. With what you eat. A lot of us are very tempted to eat good food. Huh? Uh, that's why God wants you to fast. <laughs> because you eat too much good food. <laughs> good food is good. But if good food and good things drives you to work even harder for you have to have all these things, and you know what? That becomes your God. So God will test, or rather, the devil will test you with what you consume, what you eat. You know, like, I, I cannot, lah. if I don't eat lunch, ah, stomach ache, head ache, I cannot function. Come on. Don't let stomach rule over your life. That's why we fast. Because the Lord knows that food can take over your lifestyle. Oh, I cannot function without food. Even coffee, yeah? I, I, I cannot function without coffee. So, so it's a challenge for me when I fast. If I don't eat, drink coffee, I really cannot function. So I trust the Lord. <laughs> Let it manifest from within you that truly the word of God is in you. Because we will be challenged by many things in the world. And how do you counter it? By the word of God. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and his glory. Amen. My God is a faithful God. My God is a deliverer. He will restore me. He will hide me under the shadow of his wings. He is my mighty fortress, my deliverer, my rear guard. Samo, what, what other coverage you want in the insurance? You <laughs> see, God is better than your insurance. Can I hear an amen? amen? Number two, what are we tested? Your safety. Number two, then the devil took him to the holy city and set him, set him on the pinnacle in the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He who commands his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, again it is written, you shall not put the Lord God to your test. And many of us here are putting God into the test. Lord, if you do this, I'll do that. Isn't it? Isn't it testing God? Lord, I'm going to throw myself to this business, to this venture. You better keep me safe. Ah, yo. That is testing God. Many of us do that, you know. Many of us do, Lord, if... if um, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to study, but Lord, I expect to pass. 
Because I know you will remind me. Alam, how to remind you lah. You never read, you never study. <laughs> how to remind? Cannot. You see, we are testing God all the time. Lord, I give 1,000 offering, I expect 10K. Wow. <laughs> cannot. You shall not test the Lord your God. You can, don't need to test. Just believe by His word. Don't need to tell Jesus. Amen. So we will be tested with our safety. You will be challenged to test God. Today's society, we are always tested. Lord, if I give up my, my five-figure salary, my six-figure salary, how? Are you going to provide for me or not? Wow. We're talking to the king of universe, much I'm a manager, huh? much I'm, you know, just somebody in the copy shop. shop huh? he's, he's not. He is holy. Amen. He is holy. If the Lord tells you to give up a five-figure job, then do it. You know what? God will be with you. And I've, I, I've heard so many testimonies. Those who gave up their jobs, a lot of money and all that, you know what? God gave them double, even triple, because they trusted God. And money is no longer the factor of their walk with Jesus. Because sometimes our, the factor of walking with Jesus is what? Bank account. If I don't have bank account, Lord, I won't serve you. The very fact that we are alive today is something of worth to give God the glory. Can I hear an amen? amen? Number three, we will be tested with what? Worship. Whether you'll worship the world, Satan, or you'll worship Jesus. It says here, verse 8, again, the devil took him up to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, be gone, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Okay, you see, how do you know what is true worship? True worship is not singing songs. Huh? I mean, it's good. We worship expression of Worship is through songs. But worship is bowing down. You know, Satan said, if you bow to me, I'll give you all the riches of the world. And Jesus said, you shall, not, you shall only worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Look at this. Worship is bowing yourself. You know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, how are they challenged? Bow to the image. Question, who do you bow to? What do you bow to? That's the question for all of us. And see, worship is not just bowing, you know. Who you bow and what you bow to, you will serve. Are we listening? If I'm bowing to the world, if I'm bowing to the things of the world, you know what? I'm serving the world. I'm serving Satan, even better. <laughs> but if I'm bowing, and as what Jesus said, you shall worship your God only what? I bow myself, I bow my soul, my mind, my strength, everything that is within me, bow before Jesus. And you know what? Because I'm bowing to Jesus, I cannot help but serve. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? Because you see, you'll either serve the world or you serve God. There's no in between. Tell your neighbor, there's no in between. You see, that's why Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had the courage, had the boldness, had the tenacity in their heart to say no to Nebuchadnezzar. You know why? Because they know this. They didn't bow to food. They didn't bow to richness. You know what? They served with all their heart and they followed God. And that is what is required of us in the last days. God is not looking for your bank account. God is not looking whether you're ultra competent or not. He's just asking, are you willing to serve? Are you willing to worship me? Because church, there's no such thing as worship and not serving. Eh? There's no such thing as serving without worship. It must come hand in hand. Because if not... You know what? The devil will, will steal one aspect of it. Okay, I'm serving God, but my devotion is actually to myself. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm worshipping God, but my action is actually worshiping, worshiping the world. So this one, this two must come hand in hand. Amen. 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 And I want to conclude in this. So what is our response to this impending world in Daniel chapter 3? How did they respond? Number one, choose God above all else. Again, church, as I want to repeat what I said, not choosing is choosing in itself. So we better choose God today. Do we choose God in our temper? 
Do we choose God in our unforgiveness? Do we choose God in our failure? Or we shy away from God when we are feeling all these emotions? And I want us today to, to awaken our hearts that God, no matter what, I will choose you above all else. Because you chose me, I didn't choose you. Amen? Choose God above all else. Shakara Baba Sunday. And let's pray, you know, today, God, give us the ability to choose you above all else. Because you see, to be honest, to tell us the truth, even though you want to choose God, but your flesh is weak. But the Bible says, your flesh and your heart may fail, but God is the strength of our heart and our portion forever. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Number two, do not bow yourself to the world. Do not bow yourself to the world. Because when we bow ourselves to the world, you know what? Ultimately, your flesh will serve the world. Number three, have the knowledge of God. You know what happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They knew the fear of the Lord more than anything else. You know what? The three boys, they are more afraid of God than the fire. What is the knowledge of God? Knowing God. What is knowing? Relationship with God. Are we listening? Because church, knowledge of God is not just here. You know, you don't study to know God. We can have masters and PhDs in, in, in theology and all these things are good. But if there's no relationship, that knowledge is just here. When the waves come, you know what? You know what? Your, your head will float. <laughs> it won't stand. But what God wants is you to have a knowledge of him. Number four. See what God see. Amen? See what God see. God knows the end from the beginning. Amen? Trust the Lord with all your heart. And lastly, just to end in 1 John 3, 18 to 24, very quickly, John 3, verse 18. First John, I'm sorry. 1 John 3, verse 18 to 24. Let me just quickly refer to that. It says here, little children, let us not love in, in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. You see, church, for us to stand and to love God more, there's a challenge, you know, that, 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 that we must um, pass. There's a test that we must pass. Love one another. The more we love one another, you know what? The more you love Jesus. The more you love Jesus, the more we will love one another. Because you see, we cannot say I don't love my brother and my sister if I, love, if I say I love God, you know. It comes hand in hand because Jesus loves them. And you know what? The more you know Jesus, the more we have relationship with Jesus, you'll see more of God's love on people. You will care for them, you'll pray for them, you'll call them. Because you know what? That's the love of Jesus. Verse 19, and because we love one another in deed and in truth, by this we shall know that we are of the truth and we assure our hearts before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and he knows everything. Amen. I shared this, a little bit of this in, in, during the prayer meeting, but just to conclude that as we walk with God, as we stand in the last days, do not forget the love of God. Because only by knowing the love of God, then we are reassured that God is in us and we have confidence in God and we know that even though our heart will fail us or condemn us, God will never. Verse 22, And whatever we ask, we receive Oh, verse 21, Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. Amen. Church, individually, we can condemn ourselves so many times. We can beat ourselves up so many times. Aya, I've done this sin again. Aya, I temper again. Aya, I did. Aya, this. Aya, that. Right? But at the end of it, know that God does not condemn your heart. Because God knows everything. And because of that, when we have this knowledge of God, we have confidence before God. You know what the devil does each and every day? Remove your confidence. Every day, you know? 
Every day the devil will tempt you. Every day the devil will make you do things that you do not want to do. And you know what? You lose your confidence in God. But God is saying, when you love one another, that's your confidence that you belong to me and I do not condemn you. Because you're expressing, you're manifesting that love of God. You did it. This is one of the secrets to said in the last days. Love. Because that is the very person of God. Amen. Verse 23. Oh, verse 22. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Again, the part, part of the commandment is not just loving Jesus, but loving one another. Can you tell your neighbor, I love you? <laughs> <laughs> just, just say, I care for you, I love you, you know. Hey, come on, don't be awkward, la. please. <laughs> Amen. No, because really, really, we, we need to get used to this expression. Huh? I know in Asia, we're not, we're not so, but we need to express that. Verse 24, last, uh, then we're going to end. Whoever keeps his commandments, abide in God. Can we read this together? One, two, three. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in God. So it means, church, if I do not love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, if I do not love my brothers as God commanded me, what is the commandment? Love them as much as I love them as much as I love you. That is a higher love, you know. Not just myself. The first commandment that was given in the Old Testament, love others as much as you love yourself. But in this new covenant, Jesus is saying, love them as much as I love you. That's a higher degree of love. And this is the secret of the presence of God. You want the abiding presence? You want the presence of God in your home? Love one another. Love Jesus. Love your wife. Love your husband. Although sometimes they irritate you. <laughs> Amen. I irritate Crystal Mola. Huh? She's watching. <laughs> and God in him, and by this we know that he abides in us. By the Spirit whom he has given us. Amen. Let's all stand in the presence of God. And I want to conclude at this portion where, you see, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not have the Holy Spirit. They did not have the Holy Spirit. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they've displayed the power of God. They displayed God's deliverance. But you know what? They did not have the blood of Christ. So church, you know what? We are in a better position. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm not excited. Huh? Amen. Amen. We are definitely in a better position. How Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, how they wish they have the blood of the Lamb. They don't have. They spend time with, with um, they spend time in Babylon and God promised from the book of Jeremiah, the book of Isaiah, that God will bring them back from the book of Jeremiah. When Daniel read in 70 years, God will bring them back. That's the only promise Daniel carried, you know. But you know what? In the new covenant, we have more promises from God. Amen. Today, I just quoted a few. But there's so many promises that God has in store for you and I. So you know, church... What we need to pray, what we need to ask God, Lord, give us confidence. And as we've read today, how does confidence come? When we love Jesus, when we love one another, that's when confidence comes. When we genuinely care for each other, when we genuinely go out of the way just to help the brother and the sister, you know what, because Jesus loves you, I care for you. You don't need to feel the emotion of love your brother, you know. You just need the emotion of God. And ask God, Lord, help me to love. Help me so that I can abide. If, this, if, if these, is the, these are the precepts of coming before your presence, so be it. I want your presence. I love your presence. How many of us in this place love the presence of God? Then love one another. That's the commission of God. Rabba Sunday. Can we just raise our hands and tell God, Lord, here I am, God, fill me with your love that I may be able to stand in the last days. 
Fill me with the knowledge of God. Lord, we ask for the fear of the Lord to manifest from within us, so God, that we will know, Lord Jesus, you even more, that we will fear you more than we fear the world. Rabba Baba Sunda, Rabba Baba Sunday.